there were significant regional differences uh, in uh, attitudes about work and leisure and recreation uh, in the uh, English colonial system in the 1600s and 1700s. And so I want to talk in this mini lecture about uh, a, uh, another region of the English colonial project that developed significantly different attitudes about uh, work and leisure and recreation uh, than the Chesapeake world that we just talked about. And I want to talk about Puritan New England um, in the 1620s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. Um, uh, New England was settled largely by English Puritans. Uh, and Puritans were uh, uh, English devotees uh, of a certain small slice of the English Reformation. And to understand what kinds of attitudes about work and leisure you get in New England, uh, we need to talk a little bit about Puritan theology and a little bit about what kind of a society they tried to build around their theology. Um, and the first point I would make about uh, the English Protestants, uh, and here we have a kind of a rough schematic of, of what's going on in the spectrum uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of the Reformation in Europe um, is that uh, England, by the mid-1500s, uh, was already nominally Protestant. That the Church of England had disconnected itself from Rome, had made the King of England the head of the Church, um, and England was already a Protestant nation by the time the English begin colonizing North America. But the Church of England that resulted from that break with Rome was not all that Protestant, by which I mean they hadn't changed the actual practice of worshiping uh, in an Anglican church all that much. And there were other Englishmen who wanted the English church to change more, who were very, very Protestant, who wanted to significantly alter the practice of worshiping uh, uh, in England. Um, and the English Puritans were among uh, uh, these people who wanted uh, to be very, very Protestant and wanted significant changes uh, in church practice. And in general, the way to understand what the Puritans wanted is to understand that they wanted to simplify enormously the church. Um, they wanted to worship uh, as closely as they believed they could to how they believed the earliest Christians had worshipped. And they considered a great deal of medieval Catholic practice to have been essentially smuggled in over hundreds of years uh, uh, and had turned it into something different from what they were, they were interested in. And understanding this uh, allows you to understand a, a fair amount about Puritan attitudes uh, uh, towards religion and towards work. And so the Puritans uh, wanted inten an intensely simple uh, and direct relationship with God rather than a relationship mediated through the sacraments of the church. The English Puritans were also uh, Calvinists, uh, which meant that they believed in a, a doctrine called predestination. Uh, predestination is the doctrine that salvation, that your spiritual fate, uh, is decided not by your own behavior, not by participation in the sacraments as it would have been in the Catholic Church but was determined by an all-knowing, all-powerful God for reasons known only to an all-knowing, all-powerful God. Uh, that God controlled your salvation and you did not. Um, they, this view was derived from the idea that God was all-knowing and all-powerful, and if this is true, how can God not already have determined your spiritual fate? In fact, the Puritans believed that not only was their spiritual fate out of their hands, but that it was also, as the name suggests, predetermined, predestined. Uh, they believed that arguing otherwise was to deny that God was, in fact, all-knowing and all-powerful. Um, this led, uh, this may seem paradoxical today, but this led to an intense piety, um, partly because in addition to believing that, the, that salvation was out of their hands, they also tended to believe that the saved were few and the regenerate were many. That God was uh, likely to choose a select few uh, souls to be saved, and that the vast majority of humanity uh, uh, was damned. Um, and they also believed that there would be visible signs of salvation in your outward daily behavior. 
this kind of inverts a contemporary free will kind of a view. Um, they didn't believe you could uh, achieve salvation by behaving well. That was out of your hands. But they also didn't think it was likely that people chosen to be saved by an all-knowing, all-powerful God would spend their days uh, in unregenerate fashion. And they therefore spent their lives and the lives of their communities constantly researching their own lives and the lives of their neighbors for ongoing evidence that they were right about their suspicion that they were among the saved. Uh, uh, they sometimes referred to themselves as the visible saints. Um, and beginning in the 1620s and then accelerating in the 1630s, there's a large wave of migration of English Puritans to, uh, uh, to what is now uh, Massachusetts uh, beginning in the 1630s. Um, they attempted in New England to build a society in which it was easy to uh, search themselves and their lives for ongoing evidence uh, that they were saved. Um, their concept of what a community was was in fact more or less synonymous with their church congregation. And the churches that develop in New England were eventually uh, called Congregationalist churches. And the theory was that a congregation was a community of the visible saints. You didn't just join a Congregationalist church because you felt like it. You, in fact, had to demonstrate to existing church members who were theoretically already among the elect that you, too, were one of them. Uh, this is a very sort of high barrier to entry. And in Puritan New England, you get communities designed to make it possible to live a life uh, along those lines. Um, this had consequences for their attitudes about work and leisure. Uh, the most important point for our purposes being that the Puritans were the English people most hostile to the leisure preference that we discussed in an earlier lecture. Uh, for Puritans, uh, hard work was moral. Uh, they sometimes conceptualized this in terms of the calling. Uh, in the way that we might today say that someone was called to the ministry, they believed that that applied to all the visible saints. And your calling was to do whatever it was your life's work was, uh, as well as you could do it uh, in order to serve God. Um, and so in Puritan New England, you get very different attitudes about work. First of all, this wound up a very healthy, physically, community compared to the Chesapeake. This was not a community that failed to grow enough food to feed itself. Um, this was a uh, colonial society that, particularly in the peak years of the 1630s and 40s, grew community by community. And families, and in some cases entire church congregations, would all migrate more or less at once. Um, and by contemporary measures of how you would uh, ascertain the relative physical health of the community, things like life expectancy, uh, literacy rates, Puritan New England was also a place where literacy was privileged, uh, the belief being that Protestants needed to know the word of the Lord in the vernacular. Uh, uh, rates of female literacy were high relative to Europe at the time. Uh, this was a much more demographically stable and much more outwardly sort of physically healthy society earlier than the one we talked about uh, in, the, uh, in the Chesapeake region. Um, and so these were people intensely invested in the morality of work and hostile for a combination of religious and economic reasons to the leisure preference. Um, Puritans over time have developed a reputation for being no fun. This is partly because Puritan has been used as an adjective in ways that did not always apply to the original Puritans. It wasn't so much that Puritans were opposed to fun, but there were two things that were true about Puritan attitudes about recreation and its relationship to work that explain how opponents of the Puritans began to think of them in this way. Um, the first is that much of existing English recreational culture that we discussed in the first little mini lecture 
a great deal of that was exactly the kind of culture that the Puritans believed the church had smuggled in over hundreds of years. The fact that a great deal of English recreational culture was tied to feast days and festival days, uh, that some of it took place on the Sabbath, which they were uh, intensely opposed to recreation on. Um, a lot of English recreational culture was to the Puritans the kind of thing they were trying to extract from their lives because they associated it with uh, Catholic influence in English culture. Um, second thing to understand about the Puritan attitude towards uh, recreation is that like virtually everything in their lives, they tended to need to leave a trail of breadcrumbs from their behavior to their concept of, uh, uh, of the Puritan community uh, and to their theology. And so you find Puritans doing things that were obviously meant to be fun and meant to be recreated. But because Puritans were enormously introspective and because they were also uh, uh, fairly literate for the time, you can also see them, uh, for example, in diaries, which they left a fairly large number of. Um, discussing with themselves to what degree they could justify their recreation as restorative, uh, as contributing to their ability the next day to do best at their calling. Um, uh, this is uh, something that will have a long cultural influence in the United States. We will see throughout the 19th century examples of, of recreational culture whose advocates believed it was necessary for that recreation to be vitamins of one kind or another, to be uh, not just fun for fun's sake, but good for the community or good for the individual or good for the spirit in one way or another. And this was an aspect of Puritan attitudes about recreation. Um, and another point to make about Puritan attitudes about work and recreation that had long influence into the 19th century is that the Puritans were intensely Sabbatarian. Uh, the Puritans believed that the Sabbath was a day of rest, full stop. One of the ways they disagreed profoundly with existing English recreational culture is that English recreational culture frequently devoted the second half of Sunday to the patterns of recreation that we discussed in the first lecture. And Puritans wanted to squeeze that out. Um, and the idea that attitudes about work and play and recreation needed to be different on the Sabbath than the rest of the week um, is an influence on recreational culture that we will see a long influence into the 19th and even in some ways into the 20th century. Uh, I believe in the state of Pennsylvania, professional baseball was still technically illegal on Sundays uh, until sometime after World War I. As a final point about the Puritans, this is an image of John Winthrop, who was among the most prominent of the first generation of Puritans who moved to Massachusetts Bay in the 1630s and 1640s. Um, he was uh, uh, frequently elected governor of the colony uh, in a variety uh, of non-consecutive terms uh, over the course of his period there, uh, and was among the Puritans who most clearly articulated some of the attitudes that we've been talking about. Um, and this image of Winthrop gives you some idea of his sense of himself. Anytime in a pre-photographic era you have someone sitting for a portrait, they're spending a lot of money to tell you a lot more about themselves to you than just what their nose happens to look like. And so Winthrop is trying quite consciously here to simultaneously look prosperous because those ruffles are relatively expensive luxury goods. But also relatively plain and austere, which was very much the aesthetic of Puritan public life. Uh, and Winthrop has uh, spent a substantial amount of money to project that image of himself here. Uh, Winthrop was also uh, uh, someone who kept tremendously introspective diaries. Remember Puritans simultaneously believe it's quite likely that they are among a tiny lucky few of saved for all time. 
yet their theology prevents them from being too sure about that because being too sure would deny the power of their God. And so they spent much of their lives continuing to constantly search for ongoing evidence that their suspicions about themselves spiritually were in fact correct. Um, and so John Winthrop is someone who has left diaries in which you can find him um, talking to himself about the moral legitimacy of the recreation he just partook of, justifying a recreational Saturday as a means of preparing himself for the Sabbath and for the week ahead, um, and understanding Puritan attitudes about work and recreation involve understanding the theological reasons why Puritans were very hostile to the leisure preference, and understanding that much of the English culture of recreation that we discussed in the first mini lecture was exactly the kind of thing that Puritans were trying to extract from their lives, not because they were opposed to fun in the abstract, but because they believed it was the kind of Catholic influence that they were trying to squeeze out of their lives anywhere they could.